YouTube. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on YouTube. All right, today's video is about the famous Finnish sniper, the White Death, who I believe is known to have the most confirmed kills, I think, of any sniper. And I know very little um, as far as real specifics. Um, I know, you know, uh, the sniper was Finnish and was fighting um, early on in, I think they call it the White War, kind of the Winter War, I mean, uh, with Finland and with Russia. And um, so early part of World War II, so 1939, 1940, I think. But a lot of the specifics I don't know. And this, uh, when this was, when this came up, um, I thought this would be a great uh, opportunity for me to learn. And as always, try to add any context if I can, because I know that's what you're here for as well. So um, this gets mentioned a lot. A lot of people talk about you know fa famous uh, uh, warriors uh, that go down in history. Um, the White Death gets uh, put up there. So let's add to our knowledge a little bit and get started. All right, this is from the Infographic Show, awesome channel um, that I really haven't covered. I don't know if I have at all, and I don't know why. Um, because I've known about it for, for a long time and they have great content. So if you like this original video, go down below, click the link that says original video. It'll take you to the original video. Give that a view, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Then come back over here and sub if you haven't enabled notifications to come hang out with us. Let's go ahead and get started. So the best sniper known to man. Let's see what we got. When we say the best sniper, we could be referring to who had the best shot in terms of distance or who had the most kills to his or her name. Today we'll focus more on the most prolific sniper, the person with the biggest body count. You've probably all heard of Chris Kyle, the American soldier who was the inspiration behind the movie American Sniper. The Department of Defense tells us he had 160 kills to his name. Ironically, Kyle was later sh- That's so, I mean, you guys understand what you talk about with deaths. This isn't Call of Duty, right? This is people out in the, the front lines and and I know they're a sniper so sometimes they're not necessarily in the front lines but out there risking themselves and the thing about sniper training is it's not yeah it's not call of duty it's not running around and 360 no scoping people it takes so much skill strategy patience um, precision skill all of these things to do that and having numbers what do you say 160 or something i mean that truly is amazing um to have here in the modern sense and we, our weapons of course are so good now and stuff like that so when you go the further and further you go back it's almost like the more impressive it can get with the skill that would have been required uh to to fight so that's that's already starting off and setting a, a very high standard shot and killed at a shooting range in the u.s the british media in 2015 reported that a royal marine was the world's deadliest sniper with 173 kills though they didn't name him but none of these sniping upstarts have anything on the man we are going to talk about today in this episode of the infographic show the best sniper in history if you look around the web the consensus okay. is that the focus of today's show is indeed the deadliest sniper that ever lived his name was Simo Heha, and he was a Finnish Army 2nd Lieutenant. We are told he killed somewhere between 505 and 542 people. We were just giving the Chris Kyle guy so much credit, and then whoever this mysterious British sniper is, 163. 505 to 542, so in the 500s during the war. That's crazy. Um... I have to learn more too about how like things are confirmed and stuff like that. Is it the honor system? Uh, I don't know what they do, but even if you're, even if it's less than that a little bit, that's amazing. Let's see what made this guy so good. His victims were Russian and they were killed during the winter war. This was a conflict between Finland and the Soviet Union that started in 1939 and lasted just over three months. That's a short amount of time, but it was enough time to cement Heha's wow. name in history. The so that, okay, in th in three months, I mean, he probably fought less than that. 500 something kills in three months? That's unreal. Gosh, are the Russians just walking down some hallway and he just unloads? The number of casualties <laughs> in those three months was reportedly around 25,900 Finnish deaths and 126,900 Russian deaths. You gotta give props to the Finns on this. Holy cow. Look at this lopsided victory against the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin. Doesn't get talked about enough, does it? As all the uh, all the all, all the, the, the the Finnish viewers are saying, finally, Mr. Terry, finally they're they're crediting us. 
Why'd you forget about us? Yes, we know there 20 million Russians are going to die in World War II, but holy cow. Let's look at some success there. Because, hey, remember, Russians are good at fighting the winner. You better believe the Finns are as well. Okay, Finnish people, they are, they're going to fight there too. So it's just like best soldier, right? You can't just, hey, we're going to draw you out into the cold and then you'll die. Nah, not cold versus cold. Deaths. <laughs> Heiha's kills were even recorded by the Finnish military. The document states how many people he had killed up until that day, not how many people he killed on that day. It's thought his biggest tally on one day was about 25 deaths. On December 22, 1939, the document states that he killed 138 people. On January 26, 1940, he killed 199 people. On February 17, 1940, he killed 217 people. And on March 7, 1940, one. he killed 259 people. Look at that. 200, wait. In... Okay, hold on. So, 20, 22 days. We get that. That's not in one day, right? That's just what he's at total. <laughs> he killed 259 people. Let me, let me 217. Go. I want to get this He right. killed 199 people. On February 17th, 1940, he killed 217 people. And on March 7th, 1940, he killed 259 people. That day wasn't the best day of his life, as he was very seriously wounded. He Wait, so it's 259 in one day? And he was hurt? 159 people. That day wasn't the best day of his life, as he was very seriously wounded. He took a red army bullet right to the face, and that's why photos of him that circulate around the web depict a monstrous looking man. Sorry. Dude took a shot to the face. And then shot 259 people. About being so blunt, Simo. The wound didn't slow him down so much, though, and he lived a long life. He was born in 1905 and lived until the ripe old <laughs> age of 97, dying in 2002. But dude's 97. Dude's 97. Take a shot in the face on the same day. I'm gonna go ahead and make this claim because I just think it's gonna be cool. He got shot in the face, and then he took the bullet and put it in his gun, and then and then uh, and then shot it shot shot one of the uh, soviet soldiers we're gonna go ahead and put that um someone update wikipedia for me okay but who was this man well the finnish told Seriously. all kinds of stories about him as he was the focus Why? of a lot of propaganda back in those days war heroes were an important piece of national storytelling in many countries used to foment pride in the public and give people hope he was born in finland very close to the border with russia at the age of 20, he became a volunteer in the Finnish Civil Guard, and it was certain he was going to be of some use. Prior to signing up, he was said to be an excellent hunter, but he'd also won awards for his marksmanship in many shooting competitions. Apparently, he had amassed okay. so many trophies, his house was full of them. So he's already, this guy's already got training. He didn't just walk in and become the best sniper in the world. Um, assuming a lot of hunting in that area. You know, he's in, what, north, kind of right in the center, center of Finland there, so... Um, yeah, probably a lot of outdoorsy activities. He was later enlisted as a sniper in the Finnish army, and his battleground was mostly in the snow, hence many photos of him are dressed in all white, looking a bit like James Bond. Apparently, the Soviets were a bit behind the Finnish in this respect, and their army was decked out in normal army clothing. This made them very easy to spot and kill, while Lucky Heha was extremely difficult to see. Okay, why? You're the, you're the Russians. You live in Russia. It's cold. How do you not have... Winter camouflage, snow camouflage, and you're the Soviets. Come on now, big the brain. The Finnish media jumped on this, calling him the invisible soldier and giving him the sobriquet, White Death. What else do we know about him? According to Business Insider, the Nordic version, he was humble. The same source says he would wait for his victims, sometimes as far as 300 meters away, but usually around 150 meters away. Hard to spot in his camouflage, you couldn't even see his breath in the cold as he put snow in his mouth. The BBC interviewed him on a few occasions, and so we know the following. Okay, wait, okay, so before the interview. So you can see the prep work that separates him probably from normal snipers. Obviously, the closer you get as a sniper, the better your shot's going to be, but also the more exposed you could be. Because sniping is all about, obviously, having... Um, uh, kind of being hidden but the element of surprise right so the closer you get yeah it's gonna make your shot better but there's a risk reward factor right and then yeah small little things i know i know with sniping there's so many little things you have to do you move like an inch every so often and it's just you don't do it and even yeah getting your breath hidden by putting snow in his mouth that's that's crazy so you can see this guy isn't just a lucky shot 
right? He he knows he, he knows how to hunt, and that's kind of what he's doing. Apparently, Heha was what we might call a Finnish hick and enjoyed a life in the wilderness. His hobbies, according to interviews, were skiing, hunting, and shooting. The same article says that the Russians feared this man so much, they once tried to kill him by just bombarding the area he was in <laughs> with hails of bullets and mortar, but they missed, and the White Death walked away. So they, the, so the Russians, they knew who he was, huh? Still couldn't get him. Can't. He's hidden. They once dropped an artillery shell on him, too, and apparently all that happened to Heha was his coat got ripped and he again walked away with a minor scratch. <laughs> it said he treated his occupation as a sniper like he would hunting, once telling the press that he felt no guilt about killing. I only did my duty and what I was told to do as well as I could. He's so, I mean, this guy, this guy's a killer. I mean, he's a killer. He doesn't feel guilty about killing. He's a killer. That's how killers feel, right? Um... And if you're going to be, I guess, a successful sniper at wartime, you, you have to do that. It has to be desensitizing. Again, like shooting an animal or something like that. He said, as for his modus operandi, the BBC writes, he also became a master of using sounds, smoke, and artillery fire to cover his movements when changing position. Okay, so master of using sound, smoke, artillery fire to cover his moving positions. With maps very scarce during the war, Haya relied on his memory to find the best hiding positions. Okay, so this comes, yeah, it comes back to him having all that outdoors experience. He knows the terrain, probably like the back of his hand. He's probably been all over all of these parts, right, where the fighting is. And, yeah, that's such an advantage to be fighting in a place that, of course, you know. Um, I wonder what uh, kind of stuff he did for sounds and smoke and that kind of stuff and, and, and disguising himself. With maps very scarce during the war, Heha relied on his memory to find the best hiding positions. It's said he was always careful and even obsessive about finding the right position, making sure his gun wouldn't jam and generally setting up the place where he would be shooting from. The strange thing is, his M2830 gun didn't even have a telescopic sight. But this was the same gun that Heha had hunted with throughout his life, and so he was very familiar with it. Makes sense. You know, yeah, use what you used before. But again, we were talking about how guys like Chris Kyle and that, like they had, they have such good technology. The guns are more accurate and get good distance and all that stuff. So this guy's doing it off just pure skill. I mean, all those guys are skilled, but just it's skill. It's not the technology. It said that as a kid, he would hunt birds in the forests. And to hunt this small prey, you needed to have a remarkable shot. We are told that this is one of the one reasons chance. why hunters so often make the best snipers. You can't focus on moving targets at the army shooting range, so experience killing animals is a must. The smaller, the better. The BBC writes, as a young man, he also learned to estimate the effects of wind and rain on shooting and conditions in forests. Alas, our meritorious marksman was finally hit in the face, and the shot took off much of his jaw. It's said that he spent the rest of his life in near constant pain, not to mention looking something like Sloth from the Goonies. He had 26 surgical operations, but his face would never be the same again. He would carry on hunting, however, and his eyesight was always just as good as it was during the war. His victims were never again human, and perhaps as Moose was his favorite animal to kill, he wouldn't miss very often. He even did some hunting trips with one Finnish president. There is a book about him out called The White Sniper, if you want to know more. We'll leave you with a quote right from the horse's mouth. War is not a pleasant experience, but who else would protect this land unless we are willing to do it ourselves? So, have you ever shot a gun before? Do you think you have what it would take to become a professional sniper? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called US F-35 vs Russian Su-35 Fighter Jet, which would win. Th thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I don't. I already know I wouldn't be. I've I've done. Uh, like I've shot before, and I'm I'm uh, I'm left-handed, but I have uh, I'm right like right eye dominant, and when you do that, you're already screwed up. <laughs> so I already I already know this because I've I've tested this stuff before. But um, yeah, again, the amount of patience and skill involved. I mean, yeah, you don't just learn to be a sniper, right? It takes. I mean, this guy is training his whole life, and you can see what happens. But it's more than that. It's more than that, right? All the other deceptive stuff that he had there. So he had the skills, um, the the marksmanship, the other skills to set up your shot, to set up your enemy, to uh, divert your enemy. Plus, he had the mentality, like he was saying about how he, it's kind of, I don't know if you want to call it desensitized, but he, he removed the human element of what he was doing with these sniper shots. Um, and it seems like you, to get to that level that um, Simo is at, you have to have all those elements. Okay, so 
Uh, but anyway, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, this is this was a great story. I had no idea that his numbers were that much, and I was really fascinated to see a little bit. It was just a short little thing, but um, about his strategies and um, what yeah what he used. He wasn't even using it. Looks like the best technology, even for 1939, 1940. He was still using old technology just because he was used to it. He didn't he didn't need that stuff. But then you wonder, man, how much better could he? How much better could somebody like this be with modern technology, with modern sniping technology? Maybe it wouldn't change at all, but um, fascinating to think about with that. So, well, this was great. I've heard the White Death, and I've heard just uh, about him in passing, but see some of those details uh, was was really really neat to to see that. So, all well, you guys that have brought him up, thanks for kind of keeping him in my memory so I could get a video out um, learning about that stuff. So cool. Um, with this video being kind of uh, uh, shorter, I'm sure there's other stuff that you guys know. I know a lot of you are really into military history. And if you have stuff to share, do it. Um, add comments down in the YouTube comment section there. Or better yet, come over to our Discord server and come join the uh, few thousand people we have over there that love to talk about all kinds of history topics on a daily basis. All right, before we head out today, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you go down in the original or in the video description, click on the original video link. Go over there, give that a view, like, subscribe if you like what um, happened over there. And then sub, not enable notifications you have over here, over here. Special shout out, as always, to our Patreon pledgers and uh, channel members and people that have been um, contributing in other ways. Thank you. But always thank you just for being here, being a part of our history community, and being a part of history education. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.